Welcome. Today we would be talking about important questions from environment. Indeed, a very important section for your upcoming examination. Expect around five to ten questions from this section itself. The first topic that we would start with is tar balls. Now, what is actually tar ball? You have a kind of uh, uh, oil that spreads in the marine environment. Now, when this oil spreads onto the marine environment. What happens is it slowly and gradually weathers and creates or uh, creates a kind of ball structure which rolls towards the coastline. Now with this rolling what happens is even the seabirds who are moving in the water find it difficult because their wings get struck and as a result you have a huge amount of wildlife that is affected mainly the sea life that is affected in those areas again because of this problem you have numerous beaches which have been closed down mainly in the regions of south Guj gujarat where you have a lot of industrial built across surat wapi then you have the regions of mangluru and internationally even los angeles is one of the major beaches which has been closed down because of tarball issues so you have both the statement one and two which are correct so you have both the statements that would be correct here a very very important question not only for your prelims but also for your mains examination this is very very important the next is goga beel now goga beel is the first it's not the first okay so read the sentences very very carefully it's not the first but yes it's an oxbow lake you have the meandering of the river that takes place now slowly and gradually when there is deposition that occurs along the meandering you have the cut off from the main river so the main river goes separately and a separate oxbow lake is created over the time this oxbow lake dries up and that's where we understand the formation of an oxbow lake the next is community reserve is an inhabited area which is a kind of buffer zone partially owned by private companies so again you have the second statement that is correct here but the first statement is incorrect because of this usage of word first so be very very careful while answering your questions the next question talks about sits now what is sits sits is a uh, basically a convention where you are trying to understand the international exchange of species mainly the endangered animals and plants so flora and fauna both the plant life as well as the animal life which are specific to a region and they are considered endangered under certain categories so giraffe has been in news recently it was part of the national geographic as well as your down to earth edition however this has not been mentioned under your appendix one so you have the first choice that is incorrect the second choice talks about the star tortoise asian uh, tortoise are under the higher protection which is correct so that is the second choice which is correct now since appendix one talks about the commercial exchange tokyo gecko and another species of starfish are some of the species which are uh, protected and blanketed under appendix 2 so since convention under iucn the appendix 1 appendix 2 are very very important so the sits has been adopted under the iucn 1963 the next is the environmental and social management framework now this is again a very very interesting question you have the gender action plan which is a sub component of it that is correct again it's a part of the world bank funded project which is known as encore however only three of the indian states have adopted this plan is an incorrect statement it is part of the world bank funded project known as in M core so those two statements are correct the third statement here is incorrect now what is important to understand is whenever you have an adaptation of a plan you need to understand the objectives the sub plans of the draft and those are some of the basic parameters that you need to uh, focus on now talking about some of the important uh, things that have been covered talks about the demolition of the climate resilient agriculture that has been talked about water 
harvesting is another important issue that we focus on focusing on infrastructure eco tourism building in community participation community awareness and aquaponics as one of the major components there the next is clean air better life is an initiative led by niti aayog and cii now this is an initiative which talks about addressing the problems of air pollution specifically in the ncr region of delhi by active participation from be it the government authority be it the academics academicia be it the industries or the research agencies but the sole idea is to focus on the air pollution issue and therefore the name given as clean air better life uh, the purpose is to have a task force be it for the biomass uh, management in line of the stubble burning that is seen in the regions of punjab and haryana focusing on in situ and ex situ utilization of the crop residue and that crop residue could be used in cardboard industry and other small manufacturing firms so that is the important initiative the next is national biogas and manure management program now again a very very important question it focuses on setting up a uh, small household biogas plants so that cooking requirements could be met directly by the biogas that is produced by the household now be it very clear here it is biogas and manure management so nothing to do with water resource however it has to do with the ministry of new and renewable energy so the second statement gets incorrect here the first statement is correct here a very very important question coming on to the next question is emission gap report now emission gap report has been published by unep unep uh, talks about united nations environment program and it has launched the 10th edition of the emission gaps report which is a annual report based on the evaluation of the greenhouse gas emissions to reduce uh, and the idea to reduce the carbon emissions that are there so focusing on the international temperature the rate at which the temperature is changing keeping the international temperatures under 2 degrees uh, to quit the idea of uh, global warming that is taking place and then you also have reducing the greenhouse emissions by 2030 commitment to uh, reduce the emissions for a universal declaration and so on the next is the mission bhagirath now mission bhagirath is a project not in andhra pradesh but in telangana so the second statement automatically becomes incorrect the idea is to supply water to each and every village which is sourced from uh, krishna as well as godavari river okay so krishna and godavari are the right answers here so both the options become incorrect in this case a very very important idea where we are ta talking about the mission bhagirath the next is the statement regarding e flow norms now when we are talking about e flow norms what is this the nmcg uh, try to focus on the cleaning of the river the rejuvenation of the river the environmental flow what it is the environmental flow is the minimum water which is required to protect the ecosystem of the region and the species which are dependent on it so this is statement is correct and this aims to bring in a continuous flow of water in a river stream if the river dries up definitely the ecosystem and the species would be affected so in order to rule out that scenario what is required is a continuous minimum flow of water in the river system or the river channel that is there and this could be further stipulated or uh, enhanced by having more dams creating up barrages so those are some of the ways through which we can release water in times of need the next is the india smart grid forum now india smart grid forum is a ppp model that is a public private uh, public private partnership model and this is an initiative of the ministry of power since it's the name it's very very clear it's an smart grid so we are focusing on the programs and policies talking about the industrial standards focusing on energy storage systems so it is a kind of think tank model for building up capacity in the energy sector both the statements are correct here the next question talks about ecological fiscal transfers now what is an ecological fiscal transfer uh 
when we are talking about the environmental payments which have a conditional payment systems from higher order government levels to lower order government levels we call it ecological financial uh, transfer systems and whenever you have a re revenue which is collected based on that it is related to the indicators where you are focusing on protection of the area watershed management of the area so bills for the environmental services lowering down the uh, de uh, deforestation rate sustainable management of forest uh, carbon stocks are some of the important ideas so in this line we have both the statements that are correct here a very very important idea where we are talking about natural ecosystems relating it to the agriculture in a locally grown condition and the cause that it has to bear with the environmental degradation which would be having a much higher impact onto the public the next is consider the statements regarding dead zone now what are dead zones dead zones are the areas where you do not have sufficient oxygen in the water bodies as a result you have uh, lack of water uh, sorry lack of oxygen so uh, these are what are the areas which are known as hypoxic hypoxic means they lack oxygen okay so there is a lack of oxygen and those are known as dead zones and eutrophication is one of the major causes of dead zone what is actually eutrophication you have an algal bloom that takes place which cuts off the oxygen supply to the underground water and as a result the marine organisms do not have sufficient amount of oxygen that is required. However, over the years we have seen that this phenomena is reverse, reversible because uh, if the algal bloom or the eutrophication goes off, slowly and gradually you would have further contact with the oxygen in the marine ecosystem and this phenomena could be reversed. But still, Nitrogen, phosphorus, vehicular emissions, then you have natural fertilizers, uh, fertilizers, industrial waste moving into the ocean bodies are some of the major causes of the creation of dead zones in a region. The next is the ensemble prediction system. Now, ensemble prediction system has been jointly launched by WMO and IMD. So that is correct. Now what is very very important the important idea here is what is the resolution now india joins us with this model to predict a resolution of 12 kilometer and a better forecast for agriculture and water management which would in turn improve the tourism solar and wind energy sector so this is not a direct consequence and this is not correct so you have only the first statement that is correct now global ensemble prediction systems has been developed mutually by imd as we have said world meteorological organization then you have the indian institute of tropical meteorology and national center for medium range weather forecasting which have been part of it also you have a european center which is dedicated to it and that is around nine kilometers uh, nine kilometer resolution that is there uh, this ensemble prediction system focuses on the environmental conditions over a long period the next is heat wave a very very interesting concept now this definition varies from region to region for example for plains we say it is 40 degrees celsius and above which is considered as heat waves for a coastal area it is around 37 degrees celsius however for a hilly area the category categorization is 30 degrees celsius if this happens for more than two stations in a meteorological sub department for two days the second day reading, if it is cont continuous, then we say it is a heat wave impact. So this is sudden rise of temperature in the tropical areas, that's correct. But so far it has not been classified as disaster yet. So heat wave, how do we categorize this is very, very important. In our previous class on down to earth, uh, I believe in the July edition or the June edition of 2019, we have covered heat waves in detail, a very, very important topic for your upcoming examination. The next and the last question is regarding olive riddle turtles. Now olive riddle turtles are well known, most uh, abundant of the sea turtles which are found not only in Gahir Matta but internationally in the Pacific waters, Atlantic waters as well as Indian waters. They are carnivorous in nature. So 
ऑलिव रिडल्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एंड दे आर रिकोगनाइज एज वर्नरेबल अंडर द आई यू सी एन क्लासिफिकेशन वी हैव कवर्ड अ सेपरेट लेक्चर ऑन आई यू सी एन क्लासिफिकेशन द एंड एंजर्ड वर्नरेबल द वेरियस एनिमल्स लेट लाई इन टू वेरियस कैटेगरीज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस टाइम यू हैव ऑलिव रिडल्स दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट कैटेगराइजेशन ऑफ जिराब द टोक्यो गेको विच इज सम ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वंस दिस ईयर ना what is important with olive riddle is olive riddle along with their cousins which are known as kemp's riddle basically do a mass nesting so all the females gather together for laying the eggs and this is known as eribada so this is again a very very important concept that you must be aware about so these were some of the most important questions that we have covered from the environment section stay tuned for many more updates from our side have a have a wonderful evening